This is the Blockhead Pimple Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, it's Jared Morgan. Hey there, everyone. How's it going? Uh, so it's uh, been a little bit of a spell. Some things have uh, transpired since we were last on. Uh, and mm. one of those things kind of inspired what our show is going to be about today, and that being uh, the Switch version of Pinifex getting released. And then yes. getting, I believe, what is it, 26, 27 tables? Yes, that's right. And, and pretty much the 26 and, or whatever it is um, that were released as part of uh, Early Access. Um, uh, and I think that's about it for now because they're still trying to optimize that thing. Yeah. Um, um, to go. But mu- yeah, I think everything that they're releasing on that is all the stuff that's new to PinFX. Um, that mm. hasn't wasn't in uh, Pinball FX three previously. Yeah. So that's kind of inspired uh, what we're going to be doing a little bit uh, in just a few minutes here, where we're uh, doing what uh, Jared and I consider the best <laughs> of the tables that are released. We uh, conducted a poll on Twitter and on Reddit, um, and then me and Jared have our own opinions. So I think we're in for a, a lively discussion today. Should be uh, should be a lot of fun. Should be a good one. Yeah, we haven't done one. I've done one of these for a while. When when I mentioned this idea um, to you, Chris, well, you went, "Oh well, what episode did we do that in?" And I can't, I couldn't find one on record. <laughs> I know that we've sort of covered one. I think we've done this sort of uh, like a bit of a quick, quick and dirty poll where we've just gone, "Hey, what's what's your top ten tables out of this new bunch?" Well, I was going to say, we I don't gone to this much. I don't know that before. we ever did a public poll. I no, I think, think it was more you and I just going, hey, here's our pick for what we think is the... And really, I think it was a finger in the air. But this time round, there's been some... like we, We've all gone through and invested a fair bit of time in actually yeah. making this list. Yeah. So from our perspective and from the vote from Twitter and Reddit as well, this should be a pretty good resource for anyone coming into the platform. Yep. Um, so yeah, let's dive in because it's big. There's lots um, to cover. Yeah, it is big. Uh, now... Before we hit that, uh, mm. I don't know. Today we actually planned the show. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, we yes, we do. Um, and uh, so we're gonna we're going to uh, talk one thing about brand spanking new a real pinball in one moment, and then at the mm. um, the, the backside of the episode, we're going to talk about uh, three things that Jaron and I want most to be added into the Pinball Effects platform. So that'll yeah. be coming up at the end of the show for those of you that uh, like to skip around. And I know that's the case because I can see the stats of how many minutes y'all watch. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I've been watching... <laughs> on the subject of statistics, it's been very interesting. Uh, um, I've been... With all the video uploads I've been yeah. doing from Switch... Uh, Twitch, yeah. Uh, Twitch, not Twitch. Switch. Not Switch. Know, too, too many itches. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've been noticing is over the last 30 days, we had a, a just a slight drop in subscriber count. Yes, um, I noticed that too. But, so there was uh, around six six drop in subscriber count, which really in the grand scheme of things isn't a statistic that you know is really concerning that much. Certainly not for a large, uh, a larger channel. Uh, we're not a larger channel, so w- we tend to notice these things. But this is a good chance for those of you who are podcast listeners and those of you who are like like to watch videos. Um, what do you think about the new way that I'm managing all the videos and stuff? Like, is there stuff you want to want me to change? Do you want me to? upload uh, videos that only meet certain criteria like if you are one of the people who stop subscribing which you probably won't be watching this if you were <laughs> but still if you dropped off and then maybe come came back on why'd you do that because the the analytics tell us one thing but it's not the actual behavior of subscribers that it tells us so it'd be interesting to sort of get a bit of a temperature read on this now they'll be doing it for like you know two months or so um just you know what do you think of it um, and what would you like to see? Because I'm only doing this for you all, so uh, we're not getting any money from this. I just want to share pinball and do that sort of stuff. So, like, if you want something changed, tell us. And uh, um, the good thing about it is that by doing these videos, Chris, we actually got this question asked yes, that we're about exactly. to dive into today, which is 
which is good because it actually it's more of a frequent dialogue with with all the subscribers and i'm really enjoying this like i do read the comments and i do respond to them yep um when i'm when i'm on there so keep those comments coming i really do enjoy reading them all right all that being said what we were talking about uh, initially with real pinball coming uh haggis mm. pinball who's out of australia their last table they made was a remake of fathom uh, fathom yeah Valley classic there and uh, they just announced what their newest table is going to be and it is centaur look Whoa. at that beauty Mm-mm-mm. look at it it is a sexy, thing of sexy beauty. Pant, uh, centaur. Now, the version that yeah. uh, I have up here right now is they're coming in two versions. This is the Oblivion edition, mm. um, which, among other things, it has. Let me uh, bring up some. It of has the, all uh, the things. <laughs> it, it, it has all the things. Sometimes you almost want to say it has too many things, but yeah, we're gonna get this into a. Wait, are you not gonna let me magnify? Oh, I hate it when it does that. Let's try this one. You know, sometimes it lets me magnify the picture. Anyway, uh, look. See if you can open it in your tab. I tried that. It, it, it's what it does. Oh, wait a second. That's what it, that's what it helps if I know where the right button is. There we go. Okay. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> so this is a full color uh, play field. Yeah. They so colored in the some option. things. You, you can get the original one. Yeah, so. if you buy this edition, you can get the original too. Yeah, yeah, or it's, kind of, you it's can your opt choice. For this. Um, but some of the things yeah. they changed here, uh, they put video screens down here in the apron, which is interesting. Yeah. Which um, is standard for for all the haggis pins. They do it on on, on um, Fathom too. Um, uh, what is it? Fathom, and yeah, it seems to be what they do. Okay. Um, other things to note: the whoop, black drop targets for orbs, mm. as well as over here for, uh, I forget what these are called, uh, what these targets are on the side. Do you remember what they are? Uh, the targets on the side. Um, I can't see your mouse. On the, so. oh, on the, uh, on the right the hand side, there's targets. four drop targets. Uh, I forget, oh, yeah. I forget what those are. Anyway, those are all also black, and it looks like the words orbs is written in a shiny chrome. Um, yes, they do then, look like they're being chromed. And then if you look over at the Queen's Chamber on the left-hand side, it's a black pinball. <laughs> you get black pinballs with this thing, which is kind of wild. Yeah, uh, that's going to be really interesting to play it at night. Imagine if you got opted for the black play field with black pinballs. <laughs> that would yeah. be something else at night, wouldn't it? Uh, here's, here's the color play field without the lights on, so you can really get a sense of uh, what how much like. color got put in and... Uh, <laughs> These tables don't have exactly a wide side apron for doing mirror blades, but they managed to squeeze something in there. They um, did, which is pretty sweet. And the other thing that if you haven't already realized, it's the plastics are actually color as well. Yeah. And that's that's actually quite a difference, I have to say. Like the fact that they've got the uh, sort of um, fluoro orange um underlays mm-hmm. on them as well mm-hmm. really makes them pop out like it this you know i kind of wish it had <laughs> real rivets real rivets yeah so all the oh, rivets... like oh embossed rivets and all yes. the plastics look okay oh, yeah. so here's That's the deal folks this is bill materials. In, in australia this is twenty five thousand dollars australian i don't know what that converts yeah. to american probably closer to uh, like twenty one thousand american um no it'd be half about because seriously we're, yeah, well, is that the what Aussie your dollar's at like right now? 68 cents. I'm sorry. Which is why I'm not buying any pinball parts. <laughs> like, because it's crap. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yeah, so... Hey, look, just go back to the screen. The pop oh. bumper bodies, they're transparent. Look. See? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's That wouldn't that will mean that there's a lot of light being cast. Mm-hmm. Or they're... Tra- they're the, yeah, they are transparent. You can see yeah. right through them. No, you can see. They're definitely transparent. Let's see if I can zoom wow. in on that. Roop, roop. No, go that way. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Definitely transparent. That's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's there's the... a lot going on. Now, here's the deal. It's only limited to 50 <laughs> machines that they're making. I'm like, They really? will sell them. They're going to sell or them in a heartbeat. But I'm like, yeah. really? Only 50? I know you guys are small, but that's like ridiculously small. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, so that's the the Oblivion edition. And then they mm. have the Beast edition. Oh, there's also a topper with a, like a little plasma light. Anyway, I'm mm. not a, I'm not a, uh, a topper person. 
We yeah. saw that with uh, the remake of uh, Monster Bash as well. It had a little plasma mm-hmm. disc in the top left hand corner of the play field. It doesn't really do much. No. You know. Um, here is regular edition Centaur, or Beast Edition as they're calling it. Um, this is the more traditional uh, look to the table. Let's bring in a play field shot here. There we go. And it looks like they kept, though, the orange around the plastics. Yeah, interesting. I guess that's probably fair enough because it would have been hard to actually get. Yeah, because then they'd have to remake two sets. The... But this is like these tables are being remade. For those of you who actually own a Centaur already, these should be a direct replacement drop in. Yeah. So if Haggis is open to it, you could actually order these as replacements for your things. That's the problem that I'm having with my three mm-hmm. machines. I can't get replacement um, plastics for Timeline right. or Pink Panther. And if they were to remake those, that would be the first thing I'd be asking the manufacturer. Yeah. It's like, can I have more plastics, please? <laughs> now, I got to say, truth be told, Jared, I still prefer the black and white play field. There's something uh, about this I... art style I love. But you know what? Like... I, if I had to choose between color and this, I would as well because of the fact that the plastics have that that tinge on them. Mm-hmm. I actually think that's just enough tastefully added color that I wouldn't actually need the color play field on this. I'll also say because, let me find a lit up version. Because I don't want black balls either. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, they're so, cool, but no. But check this out. This is the This is it lit up. It looks amazing. And there's a lot of color there because is. of the lights, because they're using the the LEDs. Um, yeah. This table, uh, the way Bally made it, was purely that amber glow all over. Yeah. Uh, so because of all the bright colored LEDs, I think that's enough color. Um, and, yeah. In uh, fact, the lights, this is a really good example of lights actually being a feature of the table yeah right yeah and like you compare this to noir right Mm -hmm. because they're essentially the same theme table Mm -hmm. from a black and white perspective guess who did it better (laughs) it was belly (laughs) because this is this is the the whole idea about putting like it's got the whole package doesn't it? it's got informative inserts yeah. And it's got the black and white color screen scheme, but the the lights, the actual inset lights, are the things that pop out and actually make the play field um, thematically correct. Mm-hmm. And I think this is what they missed in noir. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about our feelings about all that later on. But uh, yes, and it, I mean, look at it. You get a topper as well with this one. Mm-hmm. So it's like for an extra ten grand. What are your? You get black balls. You get um, mirror blades and stuff on the outside. You the back you glass don't... is mirrored on the. Uh, the yeah, one. fine. Um... Uh, but you know what? I mean, if I was getting the twenty five, I don't know if it's an option. I think Haggis probably would do this. Is do you get the option to actually have chromed side rails and chrome lockdown and chrome um, uh, coin door? Because I don't like the coin door on the $25,000 one. It's it's not original belly. Hold on, let me uh let me bring that up. You know. That's It little... doesn't like it's chrome. I want chrome on a pinball machine, particularly on something like this which is like really lacking a lot of shine and bling. Um it's got to be chrome everything. Like Oh yeah, it's the it's that black. It's black. It's just black everything. Nah. See powder coat? Nah. Unless that's a black. I don't know. I think it, well, it's definitely a powder coat around the edge, the the only powder. That's not, you know, the shiny chrome. Uh, Is it black chrome? It kind of, I mean, because look at the legs, too. Yeah, it does kind of have a black chrome legs. Okay, hold on. So there's that. Let's look at the Beast Edition and see the diff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's. There's no doubt about it that that thing's chrome. Yeah, that's definitely chrome. 
Hmm. Everything is chrome. I want, and yeah. and I would do. I think I would look, black chrome, chrome, black black chrome is nice. And honestly, they would have had to do black chrome processing for the balls, so they would right. have gone well. We'll just do it for everything, I guess. Yeah, but nah, not for me. No. Yeah. So honestly, for me, the fifteen thousand dollar one would be fine. I just have to find fifteen thousand dollars now. Um, so right. Um, yeah. All I can say is. <laughs> This is one of those tables that I've said before that I would love for Zen to do. Uh, mm. And I don't know if this throws a monkey wrench in their ability to do this. I don't know. If they would work with Haggis to maybe... Oh, the other thing. Uh, 2.0 code. They've, yeah, brand new uh, code. New code, uh, new modes, new callouts, new music. Uh and a new multi bulb the, that is only in the deluxe version. The, the Oblivion version, you get an yeah. extra multi ball in that. Uh, and w- way back when, when we were talking about Visual Pinball 7, <laughs> um, mm. and I mentioned there was Pack Dude had done his version of, of uh, Centaur, and he created a alternate rule set thing that I loved the crap out of. Um, mm. Because it made the balls change colors, and you could add in your own MP3 music at the start of yeah, multi balls. Right. Um, I had the Burly Brawl from Matrix play, and it just always got me excited. So, uh, I think this is a table ripe for making changes to in the code. So mm. it's definitely something that I would love for Zen to, uh, you know, bring to us. Um, mm. And this is about the earliest of the ballys that I think I want Zen touching. This is from '81 or '80. I think 81. Um, mm. Same year as, as 8-Ball Deluxe. I know that was the other thing people were theorizing that Haggis was making. Um, they they seem to be firmly anchored in the 80s belly yeah. era for the, all yeah. their recreations, and I'm okay with that mm-hmm. because just, there's I, a lot of top-quality games in that era. I just am amazed. Okay, so said 50 of the Oblivion version. They're only making 250 mm. of this one. It just seems yeah. low. I don't know if it's... low. I, I well, you know, know, spooky spooky started out like this as well. Like yeah. they their runs on their earlier games were incredibly low, and um, I don't know. I think maybe it's just a uh, their their ability to scale. Like they have had some problems producing their tables in the past, hmm. uh, and I think they're just they've realized their limits and yeah. they they know what they can actually produce now. Yeah. We, I wonder, I just wonder if they will be showing a prototype of this at BPAC in a couple of weeks because they're here in Australia. They would clearly have this table built yeah. already. Yeah. So will we see this at BPAC this year? And if we do, you can guarantee I'll be taking some photos of it. <laughs> um, having a, so and having they, a play. You know, I've, I've played Centaur uh, quite a few times. Uh, the mm. machines are typically beat to crap. Um, uh, there's a really nice restore one over at one of the uh, pinball clubs that I go to like it's brand new play field swap and new everything and, and, and that's what I'm that's what I'm like very differently with all new electronics and machining uh, at a modern know, mechs modern mechs a diamond coated play field god I can imagine what Centaur would play like it would be fast like, is the word yes. <laughs> I just it realized what it's lacking mm. the infinity lights Oh yeah, that's right. It's particularly in the mirrored black, uh, the, the the mirrored back glass version. Yeah. That's like, that's a massive thing. Yeah. For that table, that is a definite omission, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Which makes me wonder if, because I know another prime candidate would be for Haggis eventually would be uh, something like Xenon. Um, yeah. And that thing really had the infinity lights going. It did. Yes. So. All right. Uh, anyway, so we brought that to you there. Let's dive into our uh, pull and the origins of what we're thinking here with it. So it was suggested, uh, you know, it's kind of the, hey, what should I buy kind of thing? You know, what should I play first? That kind of uh, mentality. And mm. I didn't want it to be just us going, well, this is our favorite of the batch. No, there's different reasons why we like different tables, and we're constantly are, uh, bringing those to the play f- you know, to, to the, the forum here. Mm. So then it was, well, let's create some categories. And yeah. And so we whipped up some categories that we thought would give a good broad coverage of the very things that we typically tend to talk about. Um, yeah. 
And uh, yeah, so then we uh, we did these. Me and Jared kind of came up with our own nominees. Um, and then from there, threw those up into the uh, poll on Twitter and up onto the poll on Reddit. And what's interesting is uh, the Twitter crowd has different opinions than the Reddit crowd. <laughs> Yeah, which is interesting. It is interesting. So let's get into a, let's get into it, and we'll kind of uh, explain a little bit more because I only had limited space to type the poll questions. <laughs> um, yeah, to try and explain where our head was at. So the uh, the very first one, it's the uh, best. Let me just try one more time. Table. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I should probably bring up what the official nominees because we have on our list. I have a whole massive bunch. <laughs> Yeah, that didn't necessarily wind up in the finishing because we didn't quite get our act together in the very moment. Let me see here. Okay, so here we go. Best. Let me try one more game. So the uh, nominees we had here were uh, Brothers in Arms, Snoopy, Mandalorian, uh, Samurai's Vengeance, and I know Jared at the uh, end there. You. Th- Threw in World War Z. Uh, yeah. So that one more time kind of mentality. It's you finish the game and you're like, well, I know I can do better this next one. So you immediately start it back up again. And you mm-hmm. finish that. And I don't care if it's just like killing you. You know, it's beating the snot out of you. You're still just like, oh, but I was so close. No, I can do it. I can do it better the next time. Yeah, exactly, and it yeah, you just wanted like oh no 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 that was just a bad game. I'll I'll, I'll do better next time. Yeah. Yes, yeah, uh, and that uh, is just yeah that that's where all these tables fell into as a yeah uh, as a rule because they all are that way. Mm-hmm. Like um, you know, there's there's a lot of like a lot of them are quite well constructed in their mode structure and just their you know it's they're accessible but they're not too brutal but sometimes they are as well but or the shots are just still, fun you know yeah that's right they just flow well like yeah. that you just get a good you have a good time playing them um so yeah that's sort of what we were thinking about with these ones all right so the results according to twitter 46 percent of you all said a samurai's vengeance was the best let me try one more time hmm. over on reddit 47 percent of you said a samurai's vengeance <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now, my pick happens to be Brothers in Arms because once I was playing it, I mean, I always kind of enjoyed it, but once I sat down to learn it, holy crap, could I not stop playing it. And it's right. just brutalizing me every single time, but I keep on playing it. So, and I, although Samurai's Vengeance for me does have that aspect, uh, there's a critical part of that table that shuns me, and that is mm. the Zen Garden mini playfield. Um, you don't like mini playfields. I so don't like I, mini playfields that... in general, but that particular mm. one is not a fun shot. If it was a fun shot, I think that would flip the scale for me on this table. Um, what's yeah. your uh, What's your vote there, Jared? Okay, my vote is a Samurai's Vengeance on okay. that one. Um, I I see your points with Brothers in Arms, and it is one that I have not actually invested a lot of time in in fact to to because we we switched from one like top one to top three in this list um and i had to go scrambling to f- try and work out the other two that well i think the intention was always that we would have a bunch of nominees um i just had free time one day and was able to really pound through them and uh you were right. busy <laughs> I, yeah either streaming or life yeah yes <laughs> so yes um but I will say this: that like streaming has actually given me a better perspective on these tables. Oh yeah, because I'm I play sure. them more, which sure. is good. Uh, uh, for the record, too, yeah. we might uh, at the end of this we'll go through our quick notes of what we thought of all of the new tables. Because um, yeah, we Jared will throw up some notes them. that were just like, "Ooh, interesting discussion point." Uh, mm. Okay, so anyway, I think I think me being the outlier here, <laughs> you have to give it to Samurai's Vengeance. Pretty much wins on that one. Um, it really all right, is so a beautifully designed table. Next, hardest in a good way table. Uh, the nominees mm. were Brothers in Arms, Mandalorian, World War Z, and then uh, you threw in eventually. This didn't make it into the poll. Uh, Homeworld. Homeworld. Yeah, um, yeah. I didn't have time to put that one up in the poll. Uh, so <laughs> this one 
Over on Twitter, Mandalorian and World War Z both came in at 40%. Tied. Tied at 40%. Yeah. Over on Reddit, Mandalorian came in at 40%. Uh, so that's, uh, that's an interesting aspect. And again, I went with Brothers in Arms for my particular pick because I'm lucky if I complete one mode <laughs> on that table. Yeah. It's mean. It's nasty. Uh, what it would be really your uh, your pick out of those, Jared? Yeah, I would agree with you there. I would say Brothers in Arms because it is, it's hard, but it, it, all the shots seem reasonable. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing it, you're feeling like, no, no, that was all me. I screwed that up. Yeah, It's not actually, like, you don't feel cheaped out by the table. It's hard, but it feels fair. And I yes. think that's the difference with sometimes with some of these tables that are hard, but they're just not nice. Yeah, because Mando will have a mode that you're just like, why is that so, like, it's too quick or it's it's just mean. Um, World War mm. Z, uh, in one aspect, I love that even if you drain the ball, you're still in the mode. Yeah, that's... But that on the other hand, bad. there's one mode where it's the mini play field with the chainsaw and you're knocking down the zombies. And the mm. final three zombies, it is an off the very tip of the chainsaw flipper flip that is just mean and nasty. And yeah. you really get like, God damn it, I'm still stuck in this mode and I can't hit those things three. And so it's almost like you've stalled the table out. Yeah, um, you're, you're in what they call mode jail. Yes. Um, <laughs> mm. Yeah, you really are. And it, it yeah, that mini play field, it, that could be fixed. It could. Just by putting a little bit of angle on that chainsaw. Like it's flat. Mm -hmm. And it's it just needs a little bit of um, rake on the flipper up there, and that would fix that problem. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's why I didn't get my I like. I like it. I like World War Z is a definitely one that if you like have a chance to buy it on sale, definitely buy it on oh, sale. Yeah. It's great. Absolutely. In fact, in all all of these tables here, buy them on sale because they are really good. Yeah. But yeah, it's just I don't know. There's just a few things on that table that are like. Not quite as well refined as Brothers in Arms for me. Um, and I, I suck at Brothers in Arms, but I'd still <laughs> like to go and play it like you, right? Yep. Uh, moving on to easiest in a good way. So, again, the in a good way means that even though the table is easy, it's still fun, fun. to play. It's not just yeah. easy that you're bored, right? Yeah, that's um, right. And yeah, that's a very important distinction. And easy also means, in my opinion, that the rules are understandable. So the table actually mm -hmm. might be a little more difficult, but the the rules and the objectives are easy concepts. It just now is on you to achieve them. Yeah, um, that's right. So the nominees here were My Little Pony, Kung Fu Panda, and Snoopy. Mm -hmm. And the results here is that... Over on Twitter, My Little Pony won with 46% of the votes. Over on Reddit, My Little Pony won with 58% of the votes. So it's a strong yes to My Little Pony strong there. Strong yes to My Little Pony. Um, but it makes me wonder how many people have downloaded Snoopy. Because that's my pick. Uh, easiest in a good way. That's an interesting call there. Because Snoopy, the rules are... Uh, Easy to understand yes. because it is a very well structured table. So I'll give yes. you, I'll give you the points there. But I took this when I was kind of like making my list up as easy as what not the rules are easy as well as it's a good table to tell people to start out with when they're first starting with digital pinball or mm -hmm. with pinball effects. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, um, it was My Little Pony for me. Um, I also added in there, and this might surprise some yes. of you, Curse of the Mummy. <laughs> Curse of the Mummy, I actually added in there as well. Uh, and I also added in Dragons. It's because the, both of those tables I have given to my kids to play. Um, sorry, not Curse of the Mummy. Dragons, definitely. Um, and they've had fun on it because they've understood what they needed to do. My only um, thing with Dragons is once you start the actual mode against the dragon... Getting the ball to the catapult to fire the dragon is difficult. 
and it's I, a light. It's a late shot. It's a late shot. I, it's 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 my least favorite kind of shot that Zen loves to do, which is the off mm-hmm. the tipper flip shot. Yeah, just the tip and, shot. Uh, <laughs> and I started that stupid mode three times and never finished it. And it, like mm. that kept on happening game after game. And I'm like, yes, the rest of the table is easy, but I'm getting zero progression, which is just yeah, frustrating me. That is a that's a valid observation. So maybe that's not the easiest in a good way table. But just hear me out on Curse of the Mummy, right? It <laughs> is just shoot the ramps, uh-huh. shoot the ramps, and then shoot the big things in the play field that come at you. Uh-huh. Like that's a pretty easy mechanic to do. And like it's easier to get the ball up to the the mini play fields and shoot around. Because you shoot up to the left one, the ball gets magnetized and you get a shot on whatever you want up there. Mm-hmm. So it's it's pretty accessible and it's just you know everything's laid out for you just shoot the ramp a number of times and you start things like that's not a hard thing for a new person to get i've got Um, thoughts on mummy but i'm going to save them until the uh, end of this that's right because they don't relate to easiest in a good way nope (laughs) (laughs) there's there's other aspects so we're we're all being positive you know unicorns and rainbows in this section but (laughs) the last section we won't be. No. Uh, okay, so here we go. Uh, best rules. Now, this is really... This is really kind of hard. It's is quite subjective, this question. It's very subjective, because it, yeah. a lot of it has to do with... Uh, in my opinion, rules tend to be easily identified objectives, and there is some mm. depth but I don't believe that depth for depth's sake is a good thing. Um, yeah. Uh, and then there's also just that... Is there a variety to... you know When you start a mode, is there a variety to the shots? Or are all, are all the modes essentially the same thing? Um, right, yeah. You know, that kind of, so that's kind of the mentality that I went in with, with selecting... Uh, these nominees. So the nominees we have are Grim Tales, Mandalorian, Brothers in Arms, Curse of the Money, Mummy, the Money, Curse of the Mummy. <laughs> um, over on Twitter, they said Curse of the Mummy at 37%. Over mm. on Reddit, at 61%, they said Curse of the Mummy. And right. my choice is Grim Tales. Mm. which, granted, I have not gotten deep in that game, but what I love is it has different shots that it's asking you to complete for each mode. Um, That's true. There's true variety, and the shots are relatively fun. That upper playfield shot is not necessarily the best. <laughs> mm, I'd agree with you there. That's it, not it the finest no, It has timing issues. Um, it really but, does. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, I like all the rest of the shots on that table. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's so my pick is Grim Tales, but clearly uh, you, the voting public, are all on board with Curse of the Mummy. Yeah, and so am I. And so are yep. you. Okay. Yeah, I'm all in for Curse of the Mummy in that one. For the reasons already stated. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to question those reasons later. Um, all right. <laughs> all right, let's move on to best theme and gameplay integration. So here we're talking about the visuals, the audio, and the actual rules. It's, it's how well does it all work with each other? Mm-hmm. Um, it, does it feel like a complete package in the end? Right. Or does it feel like multiple disparate ideas that they just kind of threw together? So mm-hmm. the, uh, the nominees here were Grim's Tales, or Grim Tales, Samurai's Vengeance, Snoopy, and Mandalorian. If you guys are noticing a theme with our nominations that a lot of the same titles are being repeated, that's because they're really good tables. Because, <laughs> yeah, there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason. Yeah. Uh, yep. You threw in Homeworld as another yeah. as another one. Um, I know when I was talking to Pinball Wiz, he was uh, advocating hardcore for... Uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer, um, mm. which I understand what his reasons are, but when I say but the, everything's got to work really good and be fun, yeah. I just don't it's, feel it with that. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the key here is, that I thought of that as well, but the key is best theme and gameplay integration. integration. Yeah, 
therefore that game cannot win in my eyes. No. Um, so this one, I'm going to just call it right now. It's unanimous. <laughs> mm. um, Twitter at 64% says Samurai's Vengeance. Reddit at 63% says Samurai's Vengeance. I say a Samurai's Vengeance. Jared? I I really had to think about this one for a long time because there's such a minute difference between these two for me. Um, but in the end, Snoopy just edged over a Samurai's Ooh. Vengeance for me in this one. Just. <laughs> it was such a narrow margin. Yeah. Um, because the theme and gameplay in that one, the, the theme is absolutely on point oh with absolutely Snoopy. like they could not have done a better job with the theming on that table mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. and the gameplay also stacks up so mm-hmm. it just it just got the edge a little bit more with a samurai's vengeance and it was tough that one yeah for me all right um what we're saying is you can't go wrong with either of them okay this one this is gonna... really <laughs> get some controversy in this one uh, best callouts and DMD use in Pinball FX table. Nominees were Grim Tales, Godzilla vs. Kong, and Snoopy. Now, mm. the controversy comes in the form of Godzilla vs. Kong because many of you absolutely positively hate the podcast callouts. And oh. you're not entirely wrong. But hear mm. me out for why I put this on the list, and that is right. the callouts in general are super helpful. Like they tell you when things are lit, they tell you what lanes to shoot, they tell you when you know a mode has started. Like they really give you all the information, and that's the same thing with mm. peanuts on their DMD. Oh my god! Like perfect DMD integration. Uh, yeah. really get really informative and the call outs are specific to the table same thing with grim they tales are. grim tales we've as soon as that table came out we've been talking about how great the call outs are on that one it really is a gold standard oh, so yeah. far actually it's fantastic. still um for call outs so who wins mm. here we go twitter set 45% Calls it Snoopy. Okay. Um, at 38%, it was a tie on Reddit between Ooh. Grim Tales and Godzilla vs. Kong. Oh, okay. Right. Um, my choice, ultimately, is Snoopy because it doesn't have the annoying callouts. <laughs> True. And for me, I went with Grim Tales because it's, it's a full package. It really yeah. is. Yeah. I yeah. really, I, I truly don't think that any of these are a wrong call. Mm-mm. Um, no. Like I said, hate as much as you want on the, the podcasters. The, oh, yeah, I what, really what, do. What, what would you Not call like the it. other voice? The, uh, the the male voice. No, the, the, the female voice that, you know, usually is. Oh, the, the computer voice the sort computer of thing. Voice. All mm. the computer voice call outs are spot on They're perfect on point yeah it's just yeah. the dear podcast drives me nuts again when we talk about the table notes um i would like, we'll, i would we'll like zen to fire a couple of voice actors that they repeatedly hire um yeah. so <laughs> indeed mm-hmm. <laughs> let's move on to our next one which is most likable with minimal amount of play time that means you hopped on it your first time playing it and went "Ooh, that was cool Let's play that again. Hmm. That was really fun. You haven't read the rules. You haven't done anything but flip the ball around, and you're having a good time. Yeah, that's right. So, so that's classic what, pinball. Classic, classic pinball. So the nominees here were Grim Tales, World War Z, Snoopy, and Kung Fu Panda. Hmm. And the winner here, according to Twitter, it is Grim at forty six percent. And then over on Reddit, it was a tie at 35% each for Grimm and Snoopy. All right, okay. And then uh, my choice there, Snoopy. Snoopy, hey? Yeah. Yeah, I I went, I was the outlier here, and I went with Kung Fu Panda. Um, you can just flip things around in that game and, and do things. Uh, it's not an easy game, but it's 
rewarding and it's, it's easy very enough accessible. to accessible. It is. Um and the theme isn't isn't is the least offensive out of all the dreamwork tables, I yes. think. Yeah. Well, yeah. not only that uh, Am I wrong in thinking that the call outs on Kung Fu Panda actually seem uh custom to this? Like for a they, pinball machine, as opposed to dragons and trolls, where it just sounds like they grabbed audio clips from available sources and that was it. I think they are custom. Okay. They 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 seem and if they're not custom, someone's spent a lot of time going through the Kung Fu Panda DreamWorks series and mm-hmm. lifting audio callouts. They're not just like picking from a certain list. Right. So they they do feel like at least there's been some care in selecting the callouts. Yes. In, in this game. I think that's the the big thing, right? Yeah. And that helps mm. with the jumping right on and being able to play it. Yeah. Aspect. Yeah, um, the big bash choy in the middle, you smack that yeah. around a bit, you start a mode. Yeah. It's it's really nice. Yeah. Pretty yeah. easy to tell. Um so next up after that is the most likable after you understand it. So that's the you read the rules, you've put some time into it, you are no longer miffed as to what to play, and because mm. of that, it's become a really enjoyable table to uh, to flip around on. So mm. this one, we have Brothers in Arms, Mandalorian, Mysterious Island, and Homeworld. So There's a really broad cross-section there. That's table, a so very broad cross-section. Yeah. Um, according to Twitter... 59% of you like Homeworld. Hmm. Interesting. According to Reddit, 32% of you liked Mysterious Island. Oh. According to me, it's Brothers in Arms. <laughs> oh, interesting. Uh, and, and here's the thing. Uh, now, on Twitter, Homeworld, like, ran away with it. On Reddit, yep. at 32%, it was evenly split for the most part, um, between those four. Um, right, okay. So, I mean, it, there wasn't a runaway winner, per se. Uh, so what would you go with the most likable after you understand it? It's definitely Homeworld for me. Okay. I hated it when it first came out. <laughs> hated the game. But when you understand, and I'm going to ask you just quickly yeah, why you rated this th- this way. But for me and for Homeworld, and I've said this on the show before, when you understand why they slow the gameplay down mm-hmm. and why things appear to take a long time and that it it's pretty much an absolute direct homage to the game, even though I have not played the game, I've watched mm-hmm. the trailers and I can absolutely see it in the trailers about why this game is a long, sort of like has a long feeling of achievement in it. Once you understand that, and once you understand that it's it's really, really important to do modes in this game, then you have a really interesting change in opinion on this game, I think. And that's why Homeworld for me is like most likable after you actually after you change your mind about how you need to play it. That's the thing. What about Brothers in Arms for you? Why is it most likable after you understand it? Um the yeah, there's so much that I like about Brothers in Arms. Uh, I will say, I'll, I'll, I'm going to say this just straight out. One of my favorite things about Brothers in Arms is a, it is very traditional mechanical pinball. Mm. Um, the layout, the shots. Um, there's not a lot of digital trickery going on. This could be easily reproduced. It could easily be reproduced. It also follows standard pinball rules which is mm. the inlanes down at the uh, by the flippers. Once you light them, they stay lit. Oh, yes. They don't do the disappearing thing that Zen loves to do. Um, really hate that. <laughs> you, lo- God, I really loathe it. Um, the uh, upper, you know, top of the play field inlanes, they light your bonuses. So it, it follows mm-hmm. traditional pinball tropes. Now, yep. the modes... That's not the deepest thing in the world. They're kind of, you can understand what needs to be done. But what you don't realize is by shooting all the loops and the different ramps repeatedly, that increases your points. 
and increases what is possible within a mode. So like there was one, there's one mm. mode called Air Raid, and it is mm. a oh God, it's a ball buster of a mode. Um, oh yeah, because it, it's hurry up <laughs> city. And yeah, the is. first time I, I was playing, I was just like, there's no way that you can do all of this in the short amount of time you've given. But then I found out that, oh, wait a second. If I keep on shooting this upper left uh, feed, uh, Baker, I think is what you're spelling out. Each time mm. you spell Baker, it increases your time for any of the timed modes by five seconds. Well, suddenly That can got, make a difference. So yeah, suddenly you got 45 seconds to do Air Raid, and it seems like all the time in the world. Um, right, and and then similar, there's there's other modes that it just raises the values of what completing a mode does, and so now you start doing this balance of well, how much prep work am I gonna do on this, risking mm. a ball drain, and this table has ball drain risk all over the place. Oh, it's a brutal table for um, ball drain. Yeah. Versus, well, let me get through the modes. <laughs> Because I want to, I want to finish all the modes, and so there's this really fine balance that goes on, and I find that just incredibly rewarding. Um, but the pinball yep. action is fast, the shots are satisfying, and I think that's yep. why I don't favor Homeworld because the shots to me are a bit of a slog, and they're not mm. particularly fun. They're just a shot. The modes start whole in that. I think if there's one thing that Zen would improve on that is just just make the sequence up just just a little bit faster because you do spend a fair bit of time in that mode hole, or just you know just recognize because sometimes you would shoot the ball into the the spinning saucer, yeah, and it would just it would just get to the point where the ball would be like counted as a mm -hmm. as a shot, but because it hasn't settled in the sort of saucer, you've got to do a full revolution, yeah. I reckon if they just made that a bit more lenient and said, no, no, the ball's in a segment, it's past this point, then we're going to award it. It doesn't need to settle on the right edge of the of the saucer to actually get awarded. That might actually change some people's opinions about it. But that would be the only thing I'd change on that table. The rest of it, it can stay the way it is yeah. uh, for me. It's, it's actually fine. Uh, okay, so moving on here, we're going to go to uh, best toy on playfield this is an interesting one here ah, yeah, um, it is so the nominees for this were in noir there's the pistol mechanic toy which yes i know that when that first table first came out we were raving about what a really ingenious mechanical toy it does so much uh in the game um, yeah, and then on top, it's got of that, multiple uses. That's for sure. Yeah, and then if I had to throw in a secondary toy on that table, it's the the movie. Uh, oh, the uh, Roto Target. The Roto Target. Yeah. Um, I think that's yeah. a really interesting design of a toy that could be put on a physical table. Um, as long as you have a strobe shooting at it, it you're going to see the animation. Um, yeah. So I, well, I they've already got Roto be... Targets on old tables. So yeah, they, it's yeah. definitely possible. Um, the next uh, one, uh, Borderlands, the ball lock. Uh, that mm. ball lock has quite a few abilities. <laughs> it's it's an ingenious, interesting ball lock. Um, mm. For for it has functionality, I guess you would say. And then I threw in on the Reddit one also the spinning car toy. Just it's there. Might as well acknowledge it. Um, mm. And then we have uh, Mummy. So I'm calling the Pyramid the main toy. But okay. then again, also, the Upper Playfield kind of is a toy. I don't know that Upper Playfields are ever necessarily considered a toy. There's toys up there. There's toys up there. So I included yeah. both of those. That It's the Pyramid and the Upper Playfield kind of in combination with each other. Because um, mm. a Pyramid, realistically, it's just the Theater of Magic cube. <laughs> it is and it's that and a jump ramp and basically a jump ramp. Is a yeah 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 so when we go to the votes here according to twitter 46 percent say curse of the mummy uh -huh. according to reddit 59 percent say curse of the mummy according to me i'm sticking with noir <laughs> jared what do you say i my my two because i couldn't really do three in here i think we both went for two yeah um i did give noir a nod begrudgingly for the pistol um, i know you don't like <clears> the <throat> table 
But it's all about the toy. The toy, yeah. It's the thing is that the only thing that brought down the rating for me for, for me it was curse of the mummy and it was specifically the upper left play field because there's three things up there that you can shoot or which are kind of there's a bash toy there's stack drop targets and there's that spinning um mystery mm -hmm. um compassing which all three of those things are fun I like i like stack drop targets and bash toys are fun too so there's a lot going on in that upper left play field it's where i would spend most of my time in the game and it is where most of the points are too if um, you're new to the table okay. um so yeah stay up there but the the pistol in wa it is innovative that's for sure but it's overused in the game gotcha like everything goes there and it gets really tiresome after a while that's oh. just yeah fair point mm. uh, da, 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 da. let's go on best to only Best only in digital pinball moment, meaning... This, this is a fun one. This could never be recreated in an actual physical machine. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. The this is a classic. This is a, this is a zen value add right here in this right. category. Uh, the nominees. Kong, when the entire playfield flips upside down. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Um, yep. Which, granted, they did the exact same thing in, in AVP, in and they did the exact same thing in... Uh, Infinity Wars, wasn't Infinity it? Infinity War, yeah. Um, so it's yeah. not new, but of the newer tables, I mean, it's certainly an only in digital moment. Um, mm -hmm. Next nominee, Wrath of the Elder Gods. Uh, the two creatures that are on there, um, they're just... They're, they've got such life to them. Oh, they do. And the one they're... snatches balls. Uh you couldn't do that on a real table. Not not convincingly. Not convincingly, yeah. Not without it just yeah. looking like a rubber thing that's pulsing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Homeworld. I, you know, when we first talked about it, I said it was weird, which is the salvage mode. Salvage mode is where... Uh, you got the target you've got reticules a red, on all the balls. You've got a, or, or excuse me, you've got a green reticule or a square around your ball, and once you hit a ramp with a red square, now you have a red square like you're transporting that item um yeah. i said it visually looked bizarre to me mm. playing it a few times i went you know what i kind of dig this this is this mm. is cool it's not something that you could do with lights or something on the dmd it's only capable of being there now jared you also picked another mode uh for homeworld with diamond shoals yeah um i did so that didn't make the... it to the poll but i'm curious to know what is that one so Diamond Shoals is where you, it's basically like a, an asteroid video mode um, where your perspective of the table goes, you basically go to Diamond Shoals and you've got to destroy asteroids and you're using the mothership's laser to destroy the asteroids. But so what happens is your, your table basically flips around. So you're looking at it from the back down the, to the front of the play field and you see these asteroids coming towards you. Uh, and you got to shoot them with the laser, and the the turret doesn't move very fast. Okay. So you've got to like sort of like prioritize your shots and stuff like that. And it's like you know it's got really nice particle effects, and you've got exploding you know asteroids coming at you. There's no way you could do that in no. real pinball. No, absolutely. And it's not. really cool. It's my favorite mode. It's one I always do first because there's good points in it too. Okay. So according mm. to Twitter, uh, it's a tie at 33 percent each. Wrath of the Elder Gods mm. and Homeworld, and then yeah. according Good to uh, according to Reddit, it's a tie <laughs> at twenty nine percent between Kong and oh uh, we didn't talk about the last one because I like to forget about it Star Wars collectibles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Star Wars collectibles. There's no way that could be done in real life. The, the the slot machine of action figures can't be done in real life. I'm sure there's other aspects on that table that can't be done in real life. I just can't be bothered to find them. Uh, yeah. so. No, really, it's just the slot machine. I think everything else you could probably do, um, except for the, the the massive sort of like um, tower bottom left thing oh. that sticks out. Yeah. beyond the glass yeah you know that's probably going to be a bit tricky yeah, at that end of the table um anyway so reddit chose no. tw at 29 percent each kong going upside down and star wars collectibles yeah um my own personal choice winds up being homeworld jared mm. yours uh it's star wars collectibles star wars collectibles okay mm. so wow we have zero consensus on this one <laughs> 
Yeah, that's that's a that's, <laughs> that's yeah. That's pretty much take your pick. <laughs> we will agree to disagree on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Although, what the thing I do agree with is, is all those are actually really good choices for this category. Like, yeah, there there's there's a lot going on in those tables mm -hmm. digitally. Yeah. yeah, and for people that want their digital pinball to uh, celebrate that digital digital pinball yeah that Th those are the tables to pick for sure exactly um mm. all right moving on to our final category and i'm i i have a feeling that people didn't quite understand what i'm saying right and i say that purely because of how the votes fell and where they didn't fall so mm. best visually enhanced williams table this means not that Zen did a fantastic job of lighting and recreating the table. This has this everything is the to do extras. with those visual extras that they like to put on the table. Yeah. Okay. So our nominees for this were Whirlwind, which would specifically be when you, um, I mean, you got the little van up at the top, but when you start. When the storm is coming. Uh, and the storm is coming. All of a sudden there's clouds, there's rain, there's lightning, there's sparks yeah. coming out of the spinners. Um, and the the lightning actually cast light on the play field. It's yeah. like an extra flasher. It's yeah. really um, cool. So yeah. I mean, I so there's that on that twilight zone. The door actually opens, <laughs> and you see into the twilight zone. There's a yeah. Robbie the robot up there. Yep. The gumball machine transforms into a glowy uh, bit. Uh, like all the balls in there are, are bright white, glowing. The clock turns into an old-fashioned uh, fancy clock. Um, is yep. there one other element on there? I one think that's all that's jumping out. Oh, the, the rocket ship. The oh, rocket yeah, the rocket ship. Out. Yeah, so if you hit the skill shot, it does a blast um, across. Mm. Um, so it's got a lot of uh, those little gadgety toys or, or uh, visual enhancements on it. And then uh, Bride of Pinbot. You've got the Pinbot mm. at the very top looking over the the, the, the pinball area there. you've got the bride on the side whose face actually changes and she walks around um mm. which is a really cool visual uh we'll not talk about the apple <laughs> no the um, apple remains undiscussed yeah well, well you, the apple go away apple um it's got the three pods representing your ball count so that when you lose a ball one of the pods flies away um yeah so and i love the fact that like even the font on those is game correct? Yes. Because I look at this sort of thing. It's very well done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then you got uh, World Cup Soccer 94. Uh, so there's the, the the spinning soccer ball. All of a sudden has a little whirly wind effect. You've got the soccer dog. I'm sure he has a name and I don't know it. Um, striker. Striker. Yeah, striker. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's fully animated on the table. Looks really good. Um, they added a FIFA Cup trophy, but like it's Meh. at the very corner. It doesn't really yeah. do anything um, except at sit all. There. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think is there anything else on World Cup that they nah. added I don't I'll think so. the, it's only the swirly stuff coming off the ball but I think yeah. it really so responses here according to Twitter 60% of you went with Twilight Zone hmm. Reddit 36% of you went with Twilight Zone 0% of you <laughs> On both, went with Bride of Pinbot. And that's where hmm. I'm going, huh, really? Yeah. Nobody that's liked Bride? Um, and and the numbers were so kind of overwhelming for Twilight Zone that I, well, I take it back. On Reddit, Whirlwind was very close. Really hmm. close. Um, But it, it just kind of made me go, are you judging it based on your like I said, the overall presentation of the table, or were you really judging it based off of the uh, the bits that are on the table, the visual enhancements? And I mm. say that because of my choice, which is Whirlwind. Mm. Um, look, Twilight Zone is good. That door effect is fantastic. My issue between the two is that Twilight Zone is already such an extraordinarily busy table with all mm. the bits and gack that Lawler put on that thing, that the visual enhancements, in my opinion, don't add to it other than the door. That's the only thing that adds anything to it. Um, yeah. Flip that over to Whirlwind. What's the thing that we're lacking with that table? It's the wind blowing on you when you actually start the storm mode. 
Yeah. The visual enhancement that they did on the table makes me feel the storm. And yeah, even so, though you're not feeling the Even though the you're wind. not feeling it, it's there. And so for me, that's what pushed Whirlwind over the top. Yeah. It Where'd was, you go, Jared? You know, I think for me, uh, it was almost 50-50 between Twilight Zone and Whirlwind. Yeah. Um, they... The the enhancements are so on, on Twilight Zone. They are just so on brand and tastefully done that it just it's it's all the things that people who own Twilight Zone put on the game. Like yes, customizing the gumball. It's like they, they even put brand new player pianos and stuff like that in there with, mm-hmm. with you know and all that sort of stuff. Um, the clock. No, they don't really customize that because it's very hard to customize. <laughs> um, but you know, there's there's just so so many little digital extras on that, which just extend what the mods that exist out there are already in the community, and it just it just takes it that little bit extra th- yeah. bit, extra bit further. And like, hats off to Whirlwind, like the. The fact that the the storm when you have enhancements on eight, like I said, actually adds flasher effects to the playfield that cast light on the playfield, that's like that's amazing. Yeah. That's exactly what the visual effects that's what I expect visual effects to do yes. in these tables. It's a great example of that. So it was really hard for me to pick between the two. Um, no, I did find it interesting because uh, Jared late in the game threw in twi- uh, Adam's family. Adam's family. And- yeah. My thing with Adams, there's aspects of it that I love. I like what mm. they did with the thing box. Um, yes. I like the animated thing hand. I absolutely, oh, I like the fog in yeah, the five I love the fog. That's great. Yeah. I absolutely loathe the uh, golf club. It visually just obstructs and it slows the game down. Yeah, uh, I do. That's the that's the reason why it's third on my list. And Twilight Zone was first. While Whirlwind was second. Adam's Family was third. And yeah, the golf the golf thing sucks. And the other thing that really is again, this is at my gripe with Indiana Jones and its drop targets in mm-hmm. advanced mode. It's the whole delay of thing going underneath the table, popping up through the box, yeah, and doing that. That not only slows down the enhance mode. But it also slows down the enhance mode off. Yeah. And that's the thing that really grinds my gears with the way that Zen has to mess around with how the game functions. They should not do that. Look, there's <laughs> only one enhancement that I want for Adam's family, and that's a gold edition. Gold. Yeah, bring that. <laughs> Done. <laughs> that's yeah, all I need. That's all I want. Um yeah. okay. So before we go into us ripping apart <laughs> or overly praising uh, tables. Uh, we're going to mm. go through. We're going to go through all twenty nine tables that are new to Pin Effects. Um, yeah. Hopefully this. Hopefully this. What this has done for you guys, especially you that uh, just got this on Switch and are going, which should I buy? What hopefully, should I buy? Hopefully, hopefully this, this helps. helps focus in on what are the what do we think are the top ones? Because I think anything that we nominated, um, we could get behind. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's the other tables. Some of which, you know, they're not shabby. They're just not standouts. And some of which were just like, Ugh. Um, Yeah. But before we do that, uh, I was having a discussion with uh, Pinball Wiz 45B earlier today. And he mm. threw out a question. And I think, Jared, you said that you actually had this question up over on uh, the Discord channel, correct? It's not so much that I had the question up. It's uh, I've been participating in the newly added feedback channel oh, okay. on the Pinball FX okay. Discord. So, so the, the question was, going forward, what are the top three additions to the Pinball FX platform? Not tables, but additions to Pinball FX that I would like to see. Hmm. Um, my, uh, do you want to do this in reverse or forward order, Jared? As in like, like most wanted to least least or least to most i can't pick that so i'm just going to go with these are the things i want changed okay <laughs> cuz i all rank equally for me okay okay uh, yeah. my first one is custom controller support the ability to completely yep. map a controller however i damn well feel like it and that includes second flipper button <laughs> yep that's it, my number absolutely one. 
it's well it's pretty high up there for me too like uh, like for many reasons and the funny thing is that the, what i've observed in the feedback channel is zen will be absolutely blind if they're not listening to this feedback because everybody is saying it like anybody with a cabinet is going to say this yes anybody with a cabinet that's right um and and again, I don't have a cabinet, but I built the pin sim, and I built it specifically with a second flipper button to future proof myself. Yep. Um, and it works absolutely just fine with the pinball arcade. So yep. that's why I'm like, and I don't want to let off. I don't want to let Zen off the hook. No. And you know, if for our, for the you know our friends over in the visual pinball scene. That feature's been there for decades. Yes. So, you know, they're they're actually leading the way here. Okay. And Zen needs to follow. What's because your, it's, uh... it is it is the trope. It's what you need. Yeah. Uh what's your um, uh, number two? Okay, so Oh wait, uh, I should ask, what's your what's your first uh suggestion, unless that was one of them? Uh that definitely was one oh, of okay. them. Okay, so let's um, go to your number two. Yeah. All right, my number two is the two I'll read the title of the the thing that I've put in Discord, which is Max Tilt Nudge Strength Can Be Set by the Player for Greater Micro Nudging Control. Oh, interesting. So what I'd like to see is instead of just having the the distance you shove the analog stick dictate how hard your tilt is, I'd like to, because it, that's really hard, like when you're in the thick of a game and you go, oh, I, I need to tilt, you go bang on the on the stick and it just like full tilts it, right? What I'd like to do is I'd like to set a more subtle micro nudge on the tilt as my maximum tilt. So if I nudge the stick all the way to the very extent of where the stick goes, I might only want to do a 30% tilt. Gotcha. Um, right? And so because I, when I'm playing pinball in real life, I don't drag the table halfway across the room, which is what <laughs> I would be doing if I was actually doing the tilt that Zen did. That would... That would immediately tilt the game if you're playing that in real life. Yeah. And it's not realistic. Like, just let me adjust it. And th there's a, I go into some detail about how it might um, work in in practice and how it would you could balance fairness with like people trying to exploit the fact that they never get a tilt warning. But I won't go into that here. But that's definitely I would like more fine control over how I tilt in the game. Okay. Uh, for me, number two, full. Animated back glasses. Right. Yeah. Um, again, we we technically have it in pin effects right now. If you flip your your analog stick up, you can see the back mm. glass, and it is animated. It's doing mm. the things that it needs to be doing. But currently in cabinet mode, uh, you don't have that option. Right. You have to supply your own back glass, and it's not going to be animated. Um, yeah, I know that's Zen good. recently uh, worked with, uh, I forget what his name is, Freezy or something like that, to get full d, &D yep. support put in. So that's definitely a yeah. step in the right direction. Uh, yeah, that's wonderful. But I want it to be Zen providing the back glass and the animation. Yep. Um, and it, being it needs there. to be a layer that you can bring into any pinball cabinet, and it just is part of the game. Yeah. Yeah. It will make a huge difference to immersion with that game. Absolutely. And not not just for um, Belly Williams tables either for their own Zen games mm -hmm. as well. Like give them give them flashes in the areas of the game. Like it doesn't. It, I don't know. It, I think it's. I wonder what the decision process was when Belly Williams were deciding what things to put in the back glass and what things were going to be flashes. Like it's like what things do you accentuate on a back glass? And it's just really it's just for the spectators really. Uh, that's all it is to get them. To bring them in, but well, I mean, um, on a bally, uh, on your early ballys, that's where it said what ball number you were on. That's when it said that you had an extra. Oh ball. yeah, stuff like that. That's you know what. Not that they had modes, but uh, the progressive jackpots stuff, and stuff jackpots like that. And stuff. That's that's yeah, what that's was true. There. Yeah, so that's sort of in, like player informative stuff. That's table stakes. Like they need to put that into back glass. But I'm talking about like you know you might see on Attack from Mars where you know, all the flashes go off around the, the yeah. various regions of the table. That's the sort of thing I'm going, you know, 
that like how would you decide that on a zen game like where would you put the flashes right. and when would they trigger that's an extra layer of thought that all the table designers would need to put into the game but stuff like player player numbers and progressive jackpots that's just table stakes you need yeah. that for the game yeah. you know yeah. um all right moving on to let's see you did your number two so i'll go on to my number three then uh okay. for me number three is we get control of the lighting that's all oh, you want, want lighting i want yeah. i want that lighting because i want to be completely in control of it um if you want to take that to the nth effect for my belly williams can i have the back, the background be my man cave that's in the game, please. Uh, let's get rid of the mm. Bally look that is from Pinball FX3. <laughs> um, I, if I spent all this time decorating my man cave, let me be able to actually look at it, uh, you know, when I select a Bally Williams machine. Um, but mainly it becomes down to the lighting uh, because on certain Zen originals, like your cartoon tables, I really want to be able to dim the lights and let the lights that are on the table tell the story. Um, yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's because they've done, they've actually done a really good job on the Williams Valley tables of doing the ambient lighting to the yeah. effect that I would like um, certain tables. I would love to be able to visit them darker, but nine times out of 10, I'd probably play it exactly the way that they have it presented right now on the yeah. originals. There's a lot of originals that I would darken the crap out of right out the gate. Oh, yeah. They're way too bright. Yeah. Everything is the same contrast. Like, there's no contrast. No. So, yeah. Um, they I mean, they you, need shadows. You, you've you got the Unreal Engine. Use it. It's capable of this mm -hmm. very thing on it's the fly. It's what its bread and butter is. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So, that's my number three. You? Um. Okay. So, I, I've, I've got one from me and also one that i'd like to actually bring up from another community member as okay. well which i think is an excellent first. idea so for me i'm over the williams casino lounge <laughs> i don't want to have a jarring experience when i'm going between williams and literally every other pinball table that has its own yes. table based yeah. environment right yeah it's which is time what i just kind of said but yeah yeah exactly it's time to it. retire it Yes. Get rid of it. Like use like you know, you've already got the pattern in place with um um the the pin cave. You already have um literally the 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 whole environment thing with all the other tables. But I'm actually taking it a step further. You could do two things here, right? You could take a similar approach to the Zen originals where the environment is on theme with the table, like you know, the dunes and mummy, the the lab stuff and biolab. The other approach is you could do the whole Star Wars pinball VR thing and actually just bring the experience of the table into the, the fan cave mm -hmm. and then just have some tastefully done supporting animations left and right. Now, what do I think will be happening with that? I believe option two eventually is going to become how it works because of VR. I, it would I make think more sense. It would make the most sense. So I have a feeling that this might actually be on the cards and I think it'll be number two that actually gets the Guernsey here. Yeah, because um, if I'm thinking, I partly am also thinking of the eventual VR, um, that, yeah, it would just make sense that, again, my man cave is there. I can look around. I can see all those things that I got on the shelf. And there is the actual table in front of me in the lighting that I wanted, good to go. And yeah, if you want to throw in uh, some of those VR elements, like you know, the zombie reaching for you when you were playing Walking Dead, um, you know that it works. That's perfectly mm. fine. Um, but and look, I'll even say it to this way: let it be an option. If somebody wants to still play their Zen originals with those Zen backdrops, because. Um, when you're playing it on your uh, uh, on the desktop, maybe you really like those. It, it does enhance on some of those. Um, yeah. If you're playing cabinet mode, you won't ever see that side stuff anyway, so it doesn't matter it at won't. least. When you go into VR, it's going to be there. So why not make it a unified thing? It really, like, honestly, decide on one path and go down that path yeah. because then you, you take away just one more thing 
that the table designers have to worry about and the art department needs to worry yeah. about. Like they can either focus on full size rendered characters or w environmental things within the context of the man cave. I mean, yeah. it would then add more weight to what you decorate your man cave with. Well, and well. Not, only so that, your fan cave. not only that, but the, uh, you know, the neon sign for Williams and the neon sign for Bally. Well, those could suddenly drop into place <laughs> or yeah, they could be the de facto. On. Yeah. They could be the de facto things that you have right when you're playing that game I mean, that... And I'm, I mean i'm just spitballing here but if at some point zen eventually gets uh one of these other pinball manufacturers same thing their sign suddenly appears to let you in know neon. that you're in their arcade you know what i mean yeah so exactly uh well, so what was the, the uh the uh suggestion from a fan so suggestion from uh the community so community member um cub um made a couple of comments which i'll touch on briefly because i think they're all valid um so the first one that they made was if a player wins a match uh show them a different result screen saying so and ask if they would like to play again or exit uh, it makes a matchup like this less pointless which again goes into what i was riffing off as well which was how about being able to select different play modes like one ball distance from the result screen rather than having to go back out of the table oh. and then have to go back in. Yeah. So no, have you know what that's pretty mm, good because have... that would also play into our idea of the carryover ROM rather, yeah, than, yeah. rather than having to exit the table back to the menu to restart the table, the table just there. have it all in state. You it's just start another game in state, insert another quarter, bam, you're back to playing it with that kid, might with get around that problem unless they have to actually reset the ROM to an own state because of stuff. But like on their Zen originals, like e even if they can't do it on Belly Williams for technical reasons, whatever, at least do it on the, the, the Zen originals because they have full control mm -hmm. over the, um, the game state in that. Mm -hmm. So start there. And then if it's a problem in Williams, work up to Williams, but yeah. definitely like it would be a much better experience. Like just, don't make me click so many times. Like, yeah. just give me a, a clear path to stay in the game. Like, you know, I, I know that, you know, folks like um, Robo on the forum, like he was deep into fishtails at one point. I can just only imagine how frustrating it would have been for him to have to go out of fishtails and back into fishtails to start another, yeah. you know, variety of the game. So, you know, that's right. an easy one, you know. So, that's all there is for me, really. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Uh, so if you all want to play along, uh, please do. Uh, mm. Send comments on Twitter, send comments on Discord, send comments uh, right here in this video in the uh, comment section. What are your top mm. three functions that you would like added to pinball effects? Uh, not tables, but functions. Mm. But right, most should... importantly, and the, I must emphasize this, make sure you put the same feedback into the feedback channel. Oh yeah, in the in the pinball effects Discord because they are looking at it because yep. they're at the point now where they they are kind of trying to iterate on the next bits of pinball effects I think which is why they're asking these questions so make your voice heard put it into the feedback channel and and actually explain the why behind it, not just say I want justify the reason all right yeah um all right so this show's running long shall we just make it a long show Jared. It's going to be a long show. Okay, here we go. Deal long with show. It. We'll, we'll try and rip through these fast. We're not going to spend a lot of time, I don't, uh, hopefully, on this. But this is mm. our uh, quick notes uh, that me and Jared had. We'd started this sheet. We were just like, I was making, I was doing one playthrough on every single table and giving just mm. an impression um, of what I liked mm. about why I didn't to help me come up with the uh, what I felt that was the best and the worst kind of uh, uh, deal. Um, so we're just going to go down here uh, and see what we say. So for Mysterious Island, I said it was not intuitive, but seems like it would get better with understanding. And I've had a bit more play on it, and I feel that that is definitely the case. I'm still not getting very far in it, but I'm at least mm. understanding what it's asking of me. Um, yeah. Jared. So for me, like this, I can sum this up in four points. Wasted playfield real estate, tight ramps, bricky rejects, and unclear inserts. Yeah, this I don't like this table very much. Yeah, um, moving on to our next one, which is uh, Samurai's Vengeance. Um, I, I just put that it's hard, but has great theming. 
Definitely agree with that. I'd say great flow, beautiful theme, innovative boat and mode battles as well. It's got a lot going for it. Um, you also said that it was a champion pub for Zen. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's over the next page. <laughs> yeah, yeah page it page. is. It really is a champion pub for Zen. That that upper playfield gives me real boxer vibes. Um, and it's definitely one more time, that one. Yeah. Um, moving on over to Wrath of the Elder Gods. <laughs> My note was, no clue what is going on, and I hate the music. <laughs> Yep, I'd say the skill shot scoring is overpowered. There's not enough playfield DMD feedback. Um, the the outlane geometry is deadly. Uh, it's really bad. Um, the theme's great, but the music is just so off point. It's oh, distracting. It's, yeah, it's very distracting. I have to turn the music off on that one. Um, yeah, remember when we played long. that on stream uh, on episode and we actually turned off the the music and it was actually way more enjoyable. That's yeah. a bad problem. Yeah, if your music is that bad. Um, Grim Tales, I put uh, great callouts and that it seems deep on the rules. Both very valid points. I've gone, like, it's it's a glorious looking table, right? Uh, I reckon it's closest to like a Jersey Jack Pimble title. In You're Zen, not so wrong. Far. Like, <laughs> it is really, really close. Like, it's the the digital progression for what a JJP would be, I reckon. Yeah. Um, callouts are great, stackable multi balls, plentiful multi balls. Um, and the only downside with it is that upper playfield flipper is it's difficult to dial in mm. in a fixed landscape uh, yeah. a, a landscape view. It's really hard to see. Well, that and the the ball release is really long. Like it's longer yeah, it's, than you would expect for the ball to be released, and that it holds up your it way timing. too long. Yeah, it really does. I've I've had a like <laughs> just playing it the other day on stream. I was going, oh, yeah, it's driving me nuts. Yeah, um, and it's not it's. That's not the only table that suffers from that either. Uh, a lot no. of Zens that do that ball release up there on that flipper, that that fl upper flipper shot's never fun. Yeah, um, Star Wars collectibles, thank you very much. Mm, like, uh, that's time. not fun either. Because yeah. it's literally ball release flipper. There's no yeah, roll into the flipper. And I think no, that's there's the no difference. timing need, opportunity. Yeah, you need that timing of the ball actually rolling and then knowing when you can flip. Um, okay, oh, here we go. Curse of the Mummy. So I, I, so my first impression is it's so digital in nature uh, that it's a turnoff to me. Um, right. I just don't like the look of the table. The main thing, so I feel like Curse really wants to be Monster Bash. It's mm. got stackable modes, kind of like Monster Bash, but they're not good in my opinion. And the reason for that is you have Monster Bash, and I wish Zen would do this, and Zen doesn't do this, and we've been begging them. With your inserts, have four insert lights, and once you hit the ramp once, that first insert light lights, and then the second one is blinking. You hit it again, now that one lights, and the third one is blinking, so you know the progression of what you're going through. When you do a mode, everything's blinking. And you're like, but I don't know what I'm supposed to target because everything's blinking. And then if God help you, if you stack and have multiple modes going at the same time, you don't know what you're... you just like, well, I'm just going to shoot randomly wherever I go until obviously you understand what mode is lit by what ramp and therefore that's the ramp that you're going to have to hit in order to complete the mode. Um, but that's that's really my, my major gripe with, uh, with Mummy, those two things. Um, I just, I don't care for the look that waterfall in the middle drives me bonkers. Um, oh, mm. I hate the... You build the bridge, which takes forever. I mean, it's five mm. shots of accidentally having it go into the, the river. And then you build the bridge, yep. and if you lose the ball, guess what? You get to start all over again. So That is frustrating. I will I will definitely join you in that chorus. Yeah. Uh, now, the, sing the praises, Jared. Okay, so for me, this is like... I like this table. Um, so... The modes when you're in a multi ball that you can stack and you just you can just you can actually earn the modes while you're in a multi ball. You don't have to qualify them before you're in the multi ball. That's really fun. You just shoot everything and you get all the points. Like it's it's great. Um, both upper play fields are fun. The left one a little bit more so than the right. Um, uh, good multi balls. Um, there's a couple of opportunities to get them. There's different types. Um, the modes uh, are fun. They are just, you know, you, lots of things to shoot on the play field, very digital. Um, the the only th the detriment to this table, which was clarified for me in Discord recently, but like the the video mode 
is like, okay, they didn't have time to actually render a video mode, so they just made a DMD version of it, and it's mm. it's really not great. It's like but, Prince of Persia from the Apple II. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. They could have just not put one in, and I wouldn't have been upset about it. Because it's also was, excessive. Like, the very first couple of times you do it, it's really easy. Like, it's not a long It does video. get harder, though. I'm sure it gets harder, I've, but I expect it to be... Yeah. Like minecart video mode. Yes, that's my that's my benchmark for yes. video modes. Precisely, you know, I was minecart. like, I knew, I knew what I was visualizing in my head, and I couldn't pronounce the words. Yes, exactly, minecart video mode. That's in Indiana Jones yep. is like the pinnacle of video mode in pinball yep. for me. It's so. like pretty much all the video modes in that one. Uh, Indiana Jones gets video modes done right, yeah. and I think um, like apparently though. I think with the one member of Discord pointed out that with the sound design and stuff in that video mode, I think they're deliberately going for a really retro look in that in that uh, particular mode. And okay, sure, but it's jarring, and I don't like it. So you there. know what? <laughs> they also it's also hard to read the the instructions on the bottom. It's yeah, th there's too much DMV going on. I don't know. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Moving on, pinball noir. I put it's mysterious for sure. Mm. Um, it it has a super hard upper left flipper shot, which unfortunately is like yeah. a main key shot you need to be able to make, and it is brutal since you can't move your head to the side and eyeball where it is that you're shooting. It's really nasty. Um, Maybe in VR this one will be better. I think it might be in VR better, um, and it's got some really narrow shots too so i don't know that was yeah. my uh thoughts on that um you also said great toys and nice theme i'd have to oh, say yeah. that the black and white theme on this table it it does look good but mm, we've yeah, already no, discussed like how they could have made right. it a little bit That's better right. um with like it takes some cues from centaur and just make the inset lights a little bit more varied i think mm. uh, or put more of them on the tape play field there's not a lot on there no. um so for me i don't like this table at all um i very much dislike the disappearing flipper in multiball. I know there's a mechanic and reason why it disappears, yep. but it just it feels like oh no, we 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 have to. <laughs> it feels like a design sacrifice rather than an actual feature to make mm. the multiball more fun. Um, it's multiballs of famine in this game. Uh, you've got to have multiballs to get the points, or you, there's no points. Um, the Lombard Street is what I call it because it yes. looks like that. The Lombard Street Magnet toy is just utter rubbish. It's just the worst gameplay mechanic. It's not satisfying. The ball stays up there. If you screw up one of the magnets, you're, you're basically screwed. And, and, and that's the it, I think that's the problem with it is that there's there's no room for error in learning how to do the toy. You mess no. up once, boom, you're done. Now you got to light the whole thing over again to get another crack at it to try and learn how to do it. It's interesting. Adventureland has a similar mechanic on their back box uh, toy. Oh, with that, yeah, that thing's horrible. I, as well. I cannot figure out for the life of me what you're supposed to do, no. um, because it's just like throws you into it and goes go, and you're like, I don't understand what the mechanics of this at all are. I, I've got no idea. Yeah, I know yeah. that that game Adventureland can die in a fire for me. I hate that game. <laughs> it is just, in fact, it's. I, I would take more time on pinball noir than have to play adventure land i hate that table mm. so much wow. um, all right anyhow um, getting back to pinball noir and the 10 things i hate about you um <laughs> the the reliance on the gun mech for feeds to literally everything to the upper rear eject is just it's so boring over time yeah. like just put the ball somewhere else don't feed it to the upper right like the back of the play field all the yeah. time you know that's all right. That'll stop now. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> moving on. We, we, we got to rip through these faster. Uh, yeah. Sky Pirates. It's just a mess, and I don't care. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's grindy. I, I avoid it like to play during events. The theme I hate, and the call outs are uninformative. And interestingly, Zen has sent out a survey about this, mm. the very table um, to the community. In I I think it was on the I don't I where, forget where I saw it I think it was Pinball FX for this table in particular. So and, and see, I didn't obviously bother participating because I haven't played it nearly enough to make a comment other than just I don't like it and that's not constructive. 
so I don't feel like I should contribute because I, I was able to put some feedback. I, I played it enough that I, I know <laughs> that I don't like it and I know why. So um, I, I did complete it. Crypt of the Nectar Dancer. I just wrote, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's... <sighs> the... I think you need to know the game for this one to actually get value out of it, which is why Pinball Wiz loves it so which much. Which is why he loves it, but the the rhythm game aspect of it is a complete failure. There's nothing oh, fun yeah. about trying to do rhythm presses in the pinball. It's poorly realized. The shot selections oh, yeah. are not interesting. The... Uh, we we played it and we kind of ragged on it when we were playing it. There's just it's just not interesting to me. Um, no, I, I it just doesn't very little. To its to its credit though, it, it's a novel idea, sure. and I really applaud Zen for having a go at trying to do a rhythm action game in pinball. It's not an easy call. Um, so definitely based on I haven't played the game, but I've seen enough trailers to know that the theming is very very tightly integrated mm-hmm. with this game. Um, but like the, the, I have problems seeing the playfield characters that are actually walking around the playfield. Yep. Sometimes I could not actually. I, there was one point I was going, "What do I actually need to hit?" Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, the the inserts probably take the award for the least informative <laughs> of any Zen original that's out there at the moment. Yes. Uh, it's just, it's like I don't know. Hey, look, They're a blinking. whole bunch of C's. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Um, and yeah, the, the like you say, the flips to beat model is a well a big miss to me. I don't, I can't work it out. It doesn't seem to make a difference. Uh, and it is a long playing table, boy. Like you're getting, what well, when I was playing it, I think it was like to the order of 450 million scores on the thing, mm. and that's like a regular game yeah. on it. Like you don't even have to work that hard to get that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, moving on to Kung Fu Panda, I said it's very forgiving. Mm. It does have a nice theming. Um, the callouts I, I mentioned seem to be custom to the game, but they lack timely info. Uh, Correct. So that's my. It's like yes, they seem do that, but they're not being informative in the way that I want them to, like you know Grim does. Um, yeah. My biggest gripe on this whole thing, the waterfall toy. It. I had this toy when I was a little kid. Of it had some bridges that went up and down on a mechanic that you pushed a button and you moved a marble over them. And yeah. in the physical real world space, that was tricky to do to get the, mm. and you literally had to feel the mechanics, the weight of it, of it. The, the, yeah. the weight of it. And then on this thing, the timing between hitting a ball rolling this way and then flipping it so that it will catch, go the other way is so just, you got to do it instantaneously and it is, but you're, it's so fast that you can't really navigate where you need to go. I know they were trying to go basically for that Indiana Jones tilt field, but the yeah. ball rolls slow enough on that that you feel like you have a shot. This yeah, thing, absolutely. I feel like it's just complete random, blah, go. Um, yeah, you just mash the buttons and hope for the best, really. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, for this one, it's, it really is a great theme. Uh, nice open play field. It's, it's a good introductory table for young players as well. Um, but it's still challenging enough for, for more seasoned players as well, which is what I like about it. But like all these Zen pinball party tables, the DMD just it dates the table so much compared to the other ones. Um, so, yeah, that's my my comments on it. Um, moving on over to tr- let's see, uh, Dragons. Dragons. Um, I just put it so repetitive, both in shots and callouts. Oh, my God, the callouts. It's like there's <laughs> 10, and that's it. And you just hear them over. Yeah. And over and over again. Um, yeah. The four ball multi ball is too much <laughs> with the short play field and the catapult shot that you have to hit. Um, it, it, too many balls. This could easily be a two ball multi ball and that would have been just fine. Four balls mm-hmm. is ridiculous. I find myself wanting to drain them instantly and then getting that off the tip of your right flipper so you can hit that far left slot for the catapult it's too severe it, Odd. It, it, it's it's harder than medieval manus's catapult shot and that one's not easy mm. but that That's one's a satisfying. Spell, this, is... this one's just like a dumb luck half the time yeah. you send it into the uh the slingshot so yeah 
Yeah, I'd um, say for that one, like that's that center diverter mechanism is just too big mm -hmm, on the table. Mm -hmm. It takes way too much space. And then all that um, being said, long games, a little progress. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. No further comments. Okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Nailed it. Um, let's move on to trolls. Um, it has semi-informative callouts. Uh, mm. It's easy to make things happen. Yes. The modes carry over from uh, Balls Lost, as far as I can tell. Yeah, which is um, good. Which is good. It's just visual puke to look at. <laughs> yeah, it really is a clown vomit theme for me. This one, yeah. like it's it really for me it screams. This is only for kids. Adults do not apply for this table. Yeah. Um. But, you know, it's insane. That's not as bad as noir. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, it's it, that. It's, it, it's truthfully more fun to play than noir. Yes. Yeah, I, it, I, I will give is. you that. Um, yeah. Next one, which is, uh, I'm just calling it Brothers in Arms. It's my favorite of the new Zen originals that have dropped in pinball mm. effects. Um, my note was with a few code tweaks, this could be an all time classic. Um, right. Um, part of that is the mode shots are too similar. There's uh, at least two modes that are identical. You just shoot all the things. Just shoot all the things, and then mm. uh, you're waiting for a little thing to pop up to tell you what lane thing? to get. A little reticule, which is not brightly lit. It should be an insert light, is what it should be, and it should be glowing bright. And instead, yeah, after, I until, missed it. Yeah, until I knew to look for it, I didn't know to look for it. And even worse, yep. the callouts, they'll be like, they're flanking on the left. And I'm like, oh, it should be on the left-hand left? side. No, it's on the right-hand yeah. side. Sometimes it's on the left, sometimes it's on the right. So the callouts needed to be more specific to help you. Right. They said, they're flanking on the right, and it was on the right. Hey, that would be great. Yeah. But um, So it's just little adjustments like that. Um shaking up the modes just to touch on the, on the, the couple that are very similar to each other. Um, there's others that are completely different from each other, which are great. Um, the modes are also, though, too labor-intensive. Uh, they're long. They're long. It's it's literally three parts, and then you the finishing move. And if you... And yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've blown it on the finishing move. Yep. Um, <laughs> Being there as well. Mm, just, uh, mm. So those are my notes yep. on that. Yeah, I I do. The other thing that I think is interesting is that risk reward on the skill shot. Like you, like I'm sure if you really dialed in that four and a half million point skill shot, it'd be super rewarding. But geez, I you've never got to get it. some time. I go for the no. million and a half or the two million, and that's it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> on the yep. left hand side, like the, that's the left hand side shots yep. are generally the safest one. But yep. like, I just really love the fact that there's like this is a, a pattern that we're seeing in Stern games. Like you've got six different ways to get a skill shot in Godzilla. Or pretty mm -hmm. much, mm -hmm. and it's great. You like you can actually sometimes just go. Well, I wasn't successful on that skill shot, but I ended up getting a another skill shot just by accident. So it's like, yeah, you know, that's oh. a bit like sort of touch and go. One other comment of with uh, Brothers in Arms, the mm. music is too somber. It's, give me, give mm. me adventure army music. Don't give me Private Ryan music <laughs> yeah that's it's a just observation too somber i've i've turned off the music on it because uh, it just it makes you feel it's like just, you're having a downer yeah all the and time i want to have a downer i want to feel adventurous <laughs> you know give me guns yeah. never own give me uh you know the great escape give me that kind of Some stirring instrumentals is what you, you know, want give me stripes uh. um yeah uh <laughs> <laughs> uh borderlands yeah. look i really want to like this table i really mm. do i think the look is great and the theming is fantastic. Mm. It's just the gameplay is abysmal. <laughs> uh. um, and there's no hint even at what to do. None. It just throws you to the wolves and expects you to figure it out. I've read the rules. And I still don't understand what the hell I'm supposed to do. But the theming is so good. It, it, the table looks fantastic. Like I said, I really, really want to like it. I felt kind of similar with when they did Portal, that I really want to like Portal, but the gameplay is just punishing. Mm. Um, this is even more so. So it's a big swing yeah. and a miss. Could it be fixed? Could it be tweaked? Possibly, but I think it would have to be like major changes to the coding. They would, yeah, really need to go back to 
drawing board on this one because the the, the real problem that I have with it is the scattered mode start model. So it's yeah. not a shoot a one place that is clearly visible to start the modes. Um, if they just changed that one thing and made it a mode start mm -hmm. hole, I, the the enjoyment of that game for me would increase tenfold. Yeah. Um, but because they're scattered, it's it's horrible. Uh, the the playfield lights are poorly realized in this table as well. There's not yep. enough of them and they don't tell you what you need to shoot. Uh, and they're small, so you can't really see them. Yep. Um, and yeah, the call outs, the call outs, clap traps, call outs can, well, the fact is you can turn them off. So that's how <laughs> important they are. Um, and you don't actually lose anything in the game. So yeah, just that's a big miss. Yep. Not a, a swing and a miss, that one. Uh, Homeworld. We've talked a bunch about it, so we can just rip through this. Uh, I just said it's a sleepy yep. table, and I'm literally too bored to care about making the same shot over and over again. Yeah, and I've covered that, you know, while it feels slow to begin with, um, once you understand that that's the point, it actually can grow on you. Um, the shots are all easy to make. It's a fan layout. It's pretty easy to get the shots. So, yeah, it's not bad. Just get used to it. My Little Pony. Uh, surprisingly, lots to do and easy to understand. The shots are varied and fun, but the callouts are as annoying as hell. <laughs> oh, yeah. This one's a really good one for beginners. Um, the it, It's got a really accessible wizard mode. You can get to it pretty oh, yeah. easily. And and that's great for kids. They get like an ex, like that experience to have a wizard mode. And my daughter's nearly got there like a couple of times. And that's really awesome for kids. Um but yeah, the callouts are grating, and just it, it needs a bit of DMD. I reckon if they just spent some time on these um, Zen Pimple Party tables and made them DMD compatible, mm -hmm. make a big difference. Uh, Godzilla versus Kong. I put the callouts in DMD are helpful. That's why it learned its spot. Um, it does have a just one more time feel about it. I've literally gone. Wait, I can do this better. Um, mm. I think the theming is great. The colors are phenomenal on this table. It's really that neon look, neon black light kind of look is great. Um, yeah. The shots can be finicky, though. That left orbit shot through the pop bumper, it looks wide. Man, you just ricochet no. the hell off of it. It's a very annoying. Um, and the art doesn't help with your aiming. There are no leading lines to tell you where your shot goes. Um, yeah, that's, that's a really good point. That's like, a hallmark of pinball is having leading lines to help you with your aiming. And there's nothing yeah. on the table to help you with that. Yeah, that's the, that. Yeah, very interesting observation. I think that's what's missing a lot of Zen tables, actually. Mm -hmm. Like, even if it's not inserts, it's like those sort of lane patterns mm -hmm. that give you an indication of where you need to shoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not there. That's another design thing they can think about. Um, for me... Um, it's it's nice to have a really super wide table. Yep. Um, the only other one is one of the Star Wars ones, which you know they all blend into one for me. Yeah. It's Star Wars tables, <laughs> but there's that one with, uh, with the Battle of Endor on it. Um, uh, but yeah, that that podcast dear listener, horrible VFX, just get rid of it. Um, and also, it's a bit Spellorama as well um, on some of the the ramps. You got to mm. shoot them a number of times to get things. I dislike that. Jared hates Spellorama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, moving on to just Godzilla uh, I said the callouts are not helpful and are constant <laughs> like mm. it won't shut up and you're like well tell me something interesting um, everything blinks no clue what to do uh, what starts or even no. what goals are and then please stop using that voice actor you ruined ADP with this exact same voice actor you're ruining this with this voice actor um, it's, it's the guy and the girl. Um, they've ruined many yep. a table. Uh, just stop. Get... It's Godzilla. It deserves serious voice work. <laughs> Not cheery millennials. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, yeah. That's I, all I can say. <laughs> it's just like good voice actor. Just not right for the theme. No, not at all. That's the thing. Would be great um, for My Little Pony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or another table that's a bit lot more lighthearted, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, the inset lights miss, we'll call outs big miss. Um, they they're just repetitive and uninformative. Um, but like, geez, the 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 theming on this, like all the Godzilla tropes are there. Like, it's just it's really good theming. Everything else is a disappointment, yeah. unfortunately, to me. Um, I'm sure, especially when you compare it to what Stern did. Um, oh yeah, exactly. Like, wow, 
no comparison at all. Uh, Kong. I said it's a uh, visual mess. It's hard to know where the ball is supposed to go or where it'll come out because everything's hidden by that stupid mountain. Mm -hmm. Um, And the call-outs are so random in the messaging. Just all of a sudden, (laughs) the guy will be like, I don't know what that is, but I'll take it. Yeah, guess what? I don't know what that is either. So stop. (laughs) Yeah, that adds zero value to the game whatsoever. Um, You could have just cut that line and saved yourself the money for the voice call-out. Yeah. uh, Also, I will like to make this request of Zen. Whenever you flip a table upside down, can we leave it in the view mode that I already had it in? Why does it always Mm. have to go to view one? Because that messes up my aiming. I'm used to aiming based off of how I see things. And then you do that. So can we please leave it in the view mode? Um, Yeah, agreed. And I'm I'm very curious how this looks in the cabinet. (laughs) Oh, Because it should just flip over upside down in that same... But but how could you? Yeah, I don't know. It's not going to be a good one for cabinet, that one. Uh, That's that's not one that you would want to play in a cabinet. Yeah. Um, Yeah, the... the, the, Really, the inserts are just too small Mm -hmm. to to see in the fixed views in this table. You can't make them out. They're just blinking light, really. There's no context on them. No. Um, So, yeah, it's... Again... It's a bit of a miss, this one, unfortunately. And it's such a shame because that's a really good property they got there. Like the Godzilla and Kong properties, they could have done a lot with these. And I just think they've missed yeah. um, a lot with them. Uh, World War Z, great theme and integration. The modes mm. carry over, which means you might get stuck in one, like you said, mode jail. Mm. Um, it's easy to understand and hard as hell to master. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is a brutal one. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you on the theme and sound design on this. It's it's really really nice. You got to work for those scores. It's it's a good substitute for the Walking Dead, which mm-hmm. isn't hasn't made it over yet and may not make it. But the one the one downside about this table is the saucer that your ball always ends up in, but does nothing. Like it, it's like that saucer just to the left of the left ramp, or the right ramp. It and... does something, Jared. It selects what mode is. Is that all it does? Yes. <laughs> but it changes. Okay, the, I had it, no idea. Yeah, it changes. That's the way you it, change a mode. It, that's how you change what mode you're going uh, okay. to Okay. It's still <laughs> frustrating. The ball makes it in there way too much. It does. Like, if you if you brick a shot, you get it in there, you got to wait for it to eject. It's like, I hate it. Got it. Like, it's in the wrong place. Uh, Snoopy, great DMDN callouts, clear mm. shots to hit. And uh, they are varied for the modes. Each mode has a completely different set of parameters that you're uh, looking to do. Um, it's there's uh, the theme integration is amazing, and it has completely that just one more play feel about it. I it's after Brothers in Arms, Snoopy is up there at the top for what I think they've done really really good. Um, if you're yep. sleeping on this one, don't pick it up. No, get. It. Absolutely get it because it is really great. There's not a lot of comments I have here. Um, it's it's all positive. Uh, like all the things that you said are right. Uh, it's my favorite Zen Pinball Party table by far. Um, yeah. Awesome. Um, Garfield. Uh, it's mm. just meh. Um, doesn't have good shot selection. And uh, no clear idea of how to start things. Yep, I agree. It's <laughs> like I like the stuff. I really like the art style on this. Like and I like the Thomas approach. Crofts. I love Thomas Croft's tables, and I don't know what's going on in this one. Yep. Oh yeah, I don't know either. Um, uh, it's oh, it's a spellerama, all right? Jeez. Yeah. Um, it's not words that you got to spell. It's just so many repeated shots to the ramps. Horrible. Um, pretty accessible multi balls, but really not great playfield layout on this one. Uh, Mandalorian, we've had many things that we've talked about on this, so just real quickly, it's a hard table, but it's inviting. Uh, it has mm-hmm. a just one more feel, and it's nicely themed, but could use game-specific call-outs to be sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mode progression's probably the hardest of all the tables Yeah. Uh, in all the new ones on this one. Yeah. Uh, and then Star Wars Collectibles. I just wrote, I hate this table. <laughs> it's all about this combo. is your noir it's yeah. all about combo shots that are completely unforgivable um, I have no clue what collecting the figures or the combos on the table even mean and that's if you can select it in the first place because the only way to select them is by hitting a combo shot that's an off the flipper tip combo shot um, it's just overly complicated 
uh, it's a mess. I really can't be bothered with it at all. Yeah, this one, like, there was a point where they they hadn't exported the tuning yeah. from um, EGS over to the the um, the Steam version of this table, and it was it was impossible to play. Impossible. You could not actually get any of the shots on it. But once they tuned it and they actually got those things fixed up, and, and you understand again, this one is a bit like Homeworld. You got to understand how to play it. Um, and dial in the shots. Once you do that, you can progress in the game and it actually is less frustrating, but it's one that you've got to put some time in on to understand. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, that's it for it. We're not going to go over the Belly Williams stuff because why? <laughs> why? Yeah, they're not... We already know what they are. We already know what yeah. they are. Um, yeah. So hopefully that uh, helps you in your purchasing uh, decisions, you uh, Switch users. Um, boy. This is definitely the longest show we've ever done, Jared. Oops. It, should, should have split it in two. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, sorry, not sorry. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. You just, I'll put timing notes in the show notes. This one will definitely be going to audio. So, yeah, have a look at the show notes if you want to jump around. Yeah. Um, maybe we might even put some chapters in this one. If, if, uh, yeah, I think they might feeling... warrant it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, that being said, uh, next time, I do own a Switch. I think I will download the free... Uh, tables, the three free tables, and have a look. Um, I'm not going to be the best critic because mm. I don't own the FX3 tables, so I can't really right. do a comparison. Um, but I think it's at least worth looking, taking a look at it so I can have some comments on uh, on what the Switch version plays like. Uh, beyond that, I can't really tell you what we're going to be doing uh, next time other than the usual. Mm. Stuff and things, guaranteed. There you go. Until then, folks, thanks for sticking around and listening to what we have to say. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. See you later.